Hello everybody, it's Dasha Bella and Emperor, and welcome to my first ever racing guide for Star Equestrian's brand new multiplayer races. I am so excited to bring this video to you guys today because it has been a long time coming. I've been promising this for I think two months now and I think now is finally the time that I feel comfortable enough to share everything that I've learned about racing with you guys. Now unfortunately, there is a bit of a catch to this. I have probably learnt a little bit too much to the point that I can't squeeze everything into a single video. And so what I've sort of decided to do is I am going to be splitting these videos up just so that it's a bit more manageable and that you, don't, you guys don't have to sit through like a literal two hour lecture because I actually think I would be able to talk about racing for three hours if you let me. I'm not joking. If you let me, I will talk about racing for three hours. Now, obviously that is a good thing if you're like super into racing, but I don't wanna overwhelm you guys as well. So with that said, this video in particular is gonna be focusing more on the basics of racing and things that you kind of need to know before you even hit the racetrack. So we're gonna be talking about things such as the traits and personality bonuses, what items do, what horses you should be riding every week, and obviously a couple of details of the racetracks. And I think of course it does, I need to mention the controls for racing because racing controls are definitely way different compared to the controls that you would experience when you're doing show jumping across country because yeah I guess cross country is like kind of similar but jumping like there's no jumping hoops there's no speed boosts so because of that you kind of have to adjust the way that you ride these courses compared to the races. Now, this is not to say that if you're a pro, this video won't be helpful to you. Maybe you will learn something because I am going to try and go into as much depth as I can with all the beginner stuff. And maybe there was something that you really didn't think about before I kind of mentioned it. Um, but as always, guys, with all my videos, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I will try to answer as many of them as I can because the whole point of this video is I want more people to get into races. And, um, you know, it kind of sounds crazy because like, why don't more people racing? I want more people to enjoy racing. I think I feel like this is such a fun game and that I've seen too many people in the global chat just be extremely demotivated. And um, the reasons why they get demotivated are pretty obvious. I know a lot of people firstly do not like multiplayer events where you have to verse people. Like I definitely know that can be a little intimidating and I think the other thing that really demotivates people is that they don't win their races. And let me be very, very clear guys, you don't have to win your races. Winning isn't everything. There is actually only a small pool of players that have to win their races. But everyone else, like just, just do your best, place as high as you can, first isn't everything like you don't get gems you don't get gold you don't even get experience the only thing you get for coming in first in your races are ranking points and yeah if you come first you get a whole bunch of points but unless you are somebody that is way up on the leaderboard you actually have way less to lose even if you place relatively low in your races so let's get started, shall we? Because we have a lot to talk about. So firstly, let me introduce to you the new racing tab. This was added months ago, but if you're new to Star Equestrian, I do want to walk through all of this with you. So this is the racing tab. And the whole purpose of this is to keep track of all of your racing records. So this includes your ranks, how many races you've won, how many races you've done total, and the highest rank you've ever gotten when it comes to points. And so as you can see on the screen right now, this is my current ranking as I'm doing the video, 2,184 points. These are all the points I have collected over the past week worth of races. These points are important because this will determine where you sit on the leaderboard. And the leaderboard to a certain degree is kind of important because depending on where you are, this will determine your weekly rewards. And yes, guys, weekly rewards for races, if you really commit to it, are absolutely worth it. So let's have a look at the rewards, shall we? So there are four total rankings, like pure rankings for the races. You have amateur, which everyone starts in if you have never done races before. There is advanced, which is the next ranking up over amateur. If you get up another promotion, you'll bump yourself up to professional. And then finally, if you score enough points, 
you can qualify to be in Star Equestrian, but to do that, you have to score enough points to rank in the top 100 players on the server. And it is very much possible. I feel like after this video, there are gonna be some new faces in Star Equestrian because hopefully some of the things I sort of tell you today, it's gonna give you such an edge over a lot of other people in your competitions. But let's talk about the rewards because that's obviously the thing we're aiming for. My personal advice, try to place as high as you can. Now, obviously Star Equestrian is where you wanna be because you get a whole bunch of really great rewards. Now, first place is obviously and only gonna go to like one person, but the thing is, even the rewards in top 100 are totally worth it. You can still get Forest Lord, which is the race exclusive horse. You're going to have a chance at getting five star tack. You can get a five star horse. You can get four star horses and you can even get gems. Like this is just if you place top 100. It is very, very doable. And it's not as bad actually if you don't make it to top 100. Professional is also going to have some pretty nice rewards for you too. In particular, the reward you should really aim for here is actually the five star tack. And the reason I say this is because not only is the horse of choice you ride during races important, but having the correct tack will give you such a big advantage over somebody that has not properly equipped their race horses. So if you don't make Star Equestrian, do your best to try and place as high as you can in professional because the five star tack and even the keys, these keys can even give you five star tack. If you don't make it up to professional, just place as high as you can. You still get some really handy rewards. Like these toolkits are great for upgrading your existing tack. The food is super helpful when you want to actually upgrade your horses because you're not using gold to feed your horses. This is free food. And then in amateur, okay, if you are new to racing, you actually have a really awesome reward. And that is these golden tickets. These golden tickets are actually sort of a cash currency for racing. You need tickets to race and to get golden tickets, you have to pay gems. So if you get tickets at all and you're an amateur, like you kind of won the lottery because you have more chances to race. Now, speaking of tickets, let's talk about entering those races first. So as you can see, there are currently three racetracks available. However, if you're from the future, you might have some more races. So um, yeah, if there's any more, you kind of know what's going on. <laughs> so, but races are identified by an icon with the checkered race flag. So because there are only three available on my map right now, we have Heartside, we have the Redwood track, and we finally have the Agricola track. And the cool thing about all these tracks is that they are all unique from one another. So the Agricola track is nothing like the Heartside track. The Heartside track is nothing like the Redwoods track. And of course, Redwoods is nothing like Agricola. They are all completely different tracks. And it's kind of awesome to race on them like one by one because it just, it's a brand new, fresh experience. I don't mind racing on like same racetracks. I have done this on other horse games in the past, but just being able to do something different every every 30 minutes, like let's be real, it's kind of nice. But there is a chance you're going to hate a racetrack. And if you want to skip that racetrack, it is totally fine. You don't have to race on every single track. The thing with these tracks is that every week, I want you to remember this, every week there are allocated bonuses for these racetracks. So I'm going to hide my avatar here. So as you can see right now, there are three icons under the Agricola racetrack. One is the personality and two of them are going to be the traits. Now, the reason why these are here is that if you ride a horse with any matching personality or traits, you're going to be getting some really cool bonuses for that track that's going to make it so much easier for you to outrace the competition. I would dare say it's even mandatory for you to even have at least one of these bonuses, otherwise you're just gonna be left in the dust. Because Agricola has these personalities, I don't want you to get confused with all the other racetracks. The Heartside track has different personality and traits. And the same thing here with the Redwoods Assembly. So if you have a small pool of horses and none of your horses match for the Heartside race, but you have a couple matches 
for the Red Wizard Assembly and Agricola, you are actually totally okay to skip the heart side race. I actually encourage people to skip races if you don't have a matching horse for that week. If you have to, and I've seen people do this before, only having one racetrack that matches any of their horses, just race that one racetrack because without these trait bonuses, you are at such a disadvantage. And speaking of these trait bonuses, I want to go through this very quickly with you because it is so, so important. Now, in front of every racetrack, I'm at the heart side one right now, there's going to be a board that shows the bonuses you get if you do manage to have a matching horse. So unfortunately for Emperor, he's a total dud. He does not match this race at all. So he wouldn't get any bonuses, meaning that for me, I should not race him on heart side. Now, if I wanted to find a horse that does match, what you can do is go to your stable and I want you to check through your horses. Do you see those little green ticks in the corner of the personality and traits? So as you can see here with Finch, Finch has one matching trait, which is her personality, which is alert and the course gives a bonus for alert horses. So if I ride Finch, you can see that we do have the one match bonus that unlocks the boost pads. Great, okay, is this the best horse I should be riding? Maybe not. Let's have a look and see if we have anyone else that might have two matching bonuses. Okay, we do. So I have a forest lord that has two matching bonuses. So if I ride this horse, I have two bonuses. So this horse is way better for this track and I should probably consider riding this horse. Now, before anyone says, wait a minute, I've got a horse that has two or three matches but I haven't trained it at all. Guys, it's not the end of the world. I'm gonna be going into this a little bit deeper later on. There are absolutely ways to make your slower horses outperform your faster ones if they have the trait bonuses. But before we go into that, I just wanna very quickly explain how to enter the races because races, unfortunately, you can't enter them whenever you want. There is a bit of a limit. So can you see in the top right-hand corner of my screen, so in the top right hand corner, there are two currencies. One is the golden tickets that we talked about earlier. And on the right of that, we have silver tickets. So these silver tickets are what you want if you want to enter races. You need to use one ticket if you want to enter a race at all. If you don't have any tickets left, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to race. And um, these tickets, silver tickets are given for free. Everyone gets tickets, but there is a bit of a catch. So these tickets, depending on whether you are a free player or a free or a paid player, you may get more or less. So because I'm a VIP, every day I get five silver tickets to use. If you're a free to play player, unfortunately, you're only going to have access to three tickets. If you want more tickets, the only way to get more tickets is these golden tickets. And if you click on it, you can actually buy these with gems. Before anyone asks me on whether I think tickets are worth it, I would only invest in tickets if you think you have a good shot at being at the top of the leaderboard. Um, of course, you get 33% like 33 more tickets if you buy the $1,500 bundle, but I still feel like that is really expensive. Um, personally, because I have just been consistently racing every day, I try not to buy the tickets because I'd rather save my gems for other things, but it's absolutely like a personal thing if you do or don't wanna buy those tickets. But if you wanna race more than the three or five tickets you get daily, you will have to buy those tickets. So if you wanna enter a race, you can talk to the marshal here in the booth so you talk to him and then you're going to press the button at the top that says, yes, please. There's going to be a green border around the, the area. You cannot leave. Otherwise, the game will ask you, do you want to you know, leave the race? Because you need to be here if you want to enter the race. I'm going to exit now before I accidentally use a ticket. <laughs> Um, by the way, this gate will close. You can ignore this. You can literally just jump over it. It really doesn't matter. Now, here's the thing. There is actually a lady in here that is going to sort of help you cheat when it comes to picking horses. Now, this might not be helpful if you have like five horses, but unfortunately, I have like 68 right now and I'm probably going to have a lot more in the future. So whenever 
the new week takes over and they have the new race schedule, which as you can see here, this is the racing schedule with all the, with all the bonuses for personalities and traits. If you don't want to flick through all your hundreds of horses, this lady here is so helpful. If you want to know what horse you should be riding, there is an option that says, what horse should I race with? It's actually in the chat menu. Let me hide my character here. So third one down, what horse should I race with? If you click this, she's going to show us horses in order that would have matching traits for this race. And so her recommendation for me is to ride the Forest Lord because my Forest Lord has two matching personality traits and also is the highest trained horse in my stable with these two matching personalities. If I click next, I have another option of a horse with two matching personalities, but this horse is completely untrained. So of course, it's gonna be prioritized after my Forest Lord. If I do it again, I have another horse with two matching bonuses. And then after this, it's going to push me down to one matching horse because this is all that I have left. And because of this, it also shows that I do not have a perfect horse for this racetrack. So if you wanna know if you have any matching horses, you could just fast travel to all of the different racetracks, just find Jamie in the corner, and then you're gonna be able to check whether or not you have a horse that is going to match for that particular race. Like for example, this board is specifically made for the Agricola course and my horse also matches for this racetrack. So this Forest Lord is actually really great, th great this week. <laughs> actually matching two courses. But yeah, going back to Jamie, if we visit Jamie yet again, she is gonna do the exact same thing. But of course, because this is a different course, she is gonna be showing me a different pool of horses. So again, this Forest Lord is my best shot at racing on this racetrack. After this, I actually have Stormwing as my next recommendation. With that said, guys, here is my personal advice for when it comes to horses. If you are wanting to get into races, you should train one horse of every personality type. And when I say this, every personality type, I want you to have at least one horse trained that is alert, a trained aloof horse, a trained relaxed horse, a trained energetic horse, a trained challenging horse and a trained social horse. The reason why I say this is because that for the traits and personality bonuses, there is always at least one matching personality. And so if you have a horse of every personality, you're always going to have a horse that's going to be somewhat compatible for races. Sure, maybe you don't get two bonuses, but as long as you get the one, that's already a step in the right direction. And hopefully that's gonna be enough for you to earn points for the week. Now, speaking of horses, let's talk a little bit more about horses because horses are surprisingly important for races, but not just the horses, also the tack. Let's do a little bit of stats talk, shall we? So the most important stat for racing, and I cannot stress this enough, speed. You want to build up as much speed as possible for your racehorse. I say this because how much speed your horse has, it's going to determine whether it can keep up with the faster horses in the race or not. Speed makes the races easier, but speed is also not everything. Agility, jump, acceleration, and stamina are also going to come in handy, but prioritization of stats are going to be determined by how you race and how well trained your horse is. So in my personal opinion, I will always prioritize speed. After speed, the next two stats I prefer to level up is agility and acceleration. The reason being is that I think it is important to be able to make those tight turns around the corners and having the acceleration will help you if you're either slowed down by any traps, but also help you get out of the gate faster when you're at the starting line. Aside from agility and accelerate, I do know that some people are gonna prioritize stamina because you do use stamina whilst you're racing. The thing is, stamina is not the be all end all stat for racing. You can recover this through sliding and I am gonna explain this a little bit more later on, um, but if you are new to racing and maybe you're just not used to the controls enough, maybe sliding isn't a good thing for you to learn yet. Stamina will be helpful. 
but there were also items and things you can collect on the track that will also aid in your stamina regeneration. So stamina, it's fine. If you think you're struggling with races and stamina, definitely level it up. But for me, I actually put stamina on the back burner. Now here's the controversial stat or what I think is the controversial stat, jump. Do I think we need to level jump at all for races? At the moment, I personally cannot justify leveling up jump. I thought that there might be things in the races that you could sort of jump over. And at the moment, I haven't found anything that required me to have like a super high jump stat to jump over that would give me an advantage. So for now, put jump on the back burner. Leave that if you want to do cross country and show jumping. It's not really going to be something that's helpful. Like I've raced with this horse in races and 18 jump is actually enough. Like I'm pretty sure I could race with a level one jump horse and I think I'd be totally fine. Now, not only are we having to look at the horse's stats, but I also want you guys to consider what tack you should be using. Now, here's my personal advice. Every piece of tack you use needs to have speed on it. I cannot emphasize this enough. You should have speed on every piece of your tack, whether you are using blue tack, purple tack or yellow tack, because you want to build up as much speed as possible. The second stat is up to you whether you do or don't have options. So if you are struggling with your stamina, you can consider having stamina tack as well. If you want to make those tighter corners, you can also add your agility tack. If you want to get out of the gate faster or you just want to speed up quicker, consider putting on acceleration. It's totally up to you. I know not everyone will have a lot of options, but personally for me, like this is almost the perfect tack set for me. I love using my Vedic set. I don't have a full set. I think I only have the saddle, but all of my racing pieces have speed on it. So if I put this, this is a 25%, uh, sorry, a 25 point boost in speed. I have a speed saddle pad. I have three options actually. I have a blue one, a red one, and a green one. Let's put the blue one here. I have a bridle that also adds speed and stamina if I want to use this. And then lastly, for my horseshoes, you guessed it, I also have speed on this. And again, it's because you want to have as much speed as possible for your races. The stats after speed is totally up to you and how you decide to race. And here's another recommendation as well, guys. Tack is cheaper to upgrade than horses. And I'm not kidding when I say this. Tack is cheaper to upgrade than horses. And the reason I, why I say this is because tack benefits any horse that uses it. But if you level up one horse in particular, only that horse will get the benefits of the training. So if you feel your horse is taking a little bit too long to train at speed stat, and you don't have a maxed out yellow or purple tack set with speed, definitely go back and level up your tack. Your tack will benefit all of your race horses every week, where unfortunately you're just gonna have to hope that your fastest horse is a preferred horse for races. Another thing I wanna mention are breeds. Okay, guys, breeds are actually important as well. So let's head on over to the catalog. So not all horses are made equal. So if I see the Pegasus, for example, these are the max achievable stats for the Pegasi. 80 speed, 80 stamina, 60 acceleration, 100 agility, and 100 jump. These horses are great. They are speedy. They're also fantastic show jumpers when you fully level them up, but are they the best race horses? Actually, no. Contrary to popular belief, because I've heard so many people say Pegasi are the best racehorses, they do have their own benefit, but they are in fact not the best racehorses. The best racehorses are actually some of the five style horses available in the game, namely the Vulcan Frisian. I personally believe the Vulcan Frisian might be the best racehorse in the game if we don't take into consideration the Forest Lord, because the masteries for the Vulcan Frisian, sure, not everything works. The sprint dash doesn't work. Um, also, I believe the last mastery does not work, but there is one mastery that is awesome. And that is this one, the instant sprint. 
accelerate from gallop to sprint instantly. This is amazing when you're trying to start your races, especially if you do have a high mastery Vulcan because he can speed up so quickly. And on top of that, if you max out this horse, it can have up to a hundred speed, which automatically is going to make it faster than a Pegasus when both horses are equipped with speed tack. So Vulcan Frisians, if you want a great horse for racing and you want to really invest in one, Vulcans are great. Another option I believe that will be good down the line one day is the Sahara Arabian. Now at the moment, I can't recommend this yet because in our current version of the game, Arabians are kind of broken and they're not turning properly. But hopefully in the future, this does get fixed. The Sahara Arabian, I believe is going to be a really awesome horse to have because it has such a generous pool of stamina that you probably are never going to run out of it, especially if you have this fully trained. So it's really awesome to have. And if you can get a seven mastery bonus, it uses even less stamina. This mastery works in the races. Unfortunately, at the same time, it means the level 10 mastery and the level one mastery will not work, but that's totally fine. The level seven mastery, if you have it, Awesome, awesome mastery. Another horse to consider is actually the legendary Clydesdale. Now, contrary to how this horse looks, it might be big and stocky, but this horse also has 100 speed. So again, another perfect candidate for racing if you have this horse. Definitely consider investing into this because it is an incredibly speedy boy. And if you somehow manage to get level 10 mastery on this, you have a awesome passive by using 20% less stamina. So again, another horse that you're never gonna have to worry about when it comes to stamina usage. Another horse to consider for all of my leaderboard players out there, if you do have this elusive horse, dragon mustangs are great races as well. Another horse that has 100 speed. Unfortunately, the downside with this is that none of its passive abilities will be helpful in the race. So just sort of keep that in mind when you ride this horse. Um, not having that bonus, it won't hurt it too much. It will just mean you, you kind of have to adjust your racing style if you ride the Dragon Mustang. Another horse to consider is the Acer Frisian. And this is another very generous horse as well. Sure, it might not be great at agility and jump, but the speed and stamina makes them really beginner friendly race horses if you are also looking to invest in something for racing. So again, if you need a race horse and you have an Acer Frisian, if you haven't leveled it up, maybe consider it because it is another great breed to have. And one last thing before I move on, it's level one mastery is awesome so because it has this the bond reducing stamina usage is going to make it so that you will never run out of stamina with these horses so again Acer Frisian, amazing horse. If you have it, definitely look into leveling this up. Now, the last fantasy I'm going to recommend, this, this one was pretty obvious, guys. I don't think anyone's surprised about this, is the Forest Lord. The Forest Lord has a lot of priority in some great racing stats. Speed, 100. Stamina, 100. A very generous racehorse if you have this. It's got 80 acceleration, so it's going to be very quick to speed up as well. Now, the important thing with the Forest Lord is that this horse has amazing masteries literally made for racing. If you can get your hands on a Forest Lord, definitely level this up just for races. Like they are wonderful race horses. Mastery number one, 25 less stamina usage when moving on grass. A lot of the racetracks have grass, so you don't, you don't have to worry about your stamina as much. Level seven mastery, recover stamina 100% faster while on grass. Again, another great mastery. If you ever run out of stamina, just slow down, run on the grass for a little bit, and then you'll be able to get that stamina back. Lastly, this one's awesome. The rampant regrowth, level 10 mastery. And this is assuming you've done a lot of racing or you're constantly on top of the leaderboard. Once per riding event, fully replenish all stamina when you run out of stamina. This is another amazing trait to have. So you would like essentially with the Forest Lord, you should never, ever, ever, ever run out of stamina. So if you can get this horse guys, 
awesome to have, definitely consider to level. I actually think the Frisian Sports are probably the best horse to ride if you want to race and you don't own a Fantasy 5 Star. This is another breed that also comes with 100, sta uh, sorry, 100 speed and they also have 90 acceleration. So they are quick to speed up and they're very speedy horses with a reasonable amount of stamina and agility. If we talk about masteries for the Frisian sports, you do get two masteries that will work for races. The first one is stylish stamina. So you're gonna be using less stamina for each piece of three star tack and above. Unfortunately, the level seven mastery will not be useful at all, but the level 10 mastery, if you somehow have a 10 mastery Frisian sport, this, this bonus is going to, again, make it so much easier in races because you don't have to spend so much time trying to nurse your stamina back. So again, great breed to have if you want to ride something that isn't a fantasy horse. Those are your best options for five-star horses for both fantasy and regular breeds. Now, if you don't have any of those horses there are alternative choices obviously just pick the horse that you currently own that has the most speed um, and if you only have four star horses the best four star horse that's going to give you the most bang for your buck is the american quarter horses and you only need one american quarter horse to trigger the bonus that's going to make them so awesome so at level one mastery they gain this ability instant sprint from uh, gallop to sprint super helpful if you're trying to get out of the starting gate because you can get right into that gallop they also have reasonable stats considering they are a four-star breed 95 acceleration i know for some people that might not be very attractive but considering that acceleration in my personal opinion is a great stat i actually think this is amazing to have on a four-star horse and then secondly, you have access to 70 speed. Like this is quite reasonable. And I'm going to be honest, guys, Moonlight has won me so many races and I haven't even maxed out her speed stat. Like if you just look at what she has now, she has 60 speed. I, I'm not even close to maxing her out, but she has done so, so much for me. So if you want a cheap horse, quarter horses, they are amazing to have. Otherwise, as, as I said again, guys, if you don't have anything that can hit that 100 speed mark and you don't have a quarter horse, look through your horses and just find out what's the fastest breed you own. Definitely invest in those until you get something better. All right, guys, it is time to talk a little bit more about these race traits because I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to have access to the race traits. And I'm going to show you the bonuses on screen as well so you guys have a better idea of what it looks like in game. So let's talk about the first trait bonus, the bonus you need if you're going to race on any racetrack. Again, I'm going to say this again. Do not race unless the horses you own can match at least one trait bonus, because if you don't, the race is going to be absolutely miserable. So going from top to bottom, we have trait number one, and this is the boost pads. The boost pads are these pads on the ground during the race. If you run on top of them, they give you a speed boost. And during that boost period of time as well, um, you're not going to use as much stamina as you normally would. So this is super helpful to have access to the boost pads because not only do you run faster, but you'll be able to run for much longer than you usually would if you don't have access to the boost pads. The second bonus, you're going to have access to stronger items during the races. So if you didn't know, there are two tiers of items. There are basic items that everyone gets, whether you have a matching trait or not. And then there are advanced items. These advanced items give you a lot of options of slowing players around you and even in front of you. And not just slowing players down, you've got some really awesome items that can make you go so fast in these races to help play catch up. Now the last bonus, if you are lucky enough to get a three match on any of your horses, you gain access to two item slots and items from the starting line. So normally players only have access to one slot for items. So you can only hold one item. You can't pick up more than that. But if you do have the three, three match bonus, you can hold on to two items. You cannot pick between the two items. You have to use the item that is on the left and the one on the right will rotate down to the left side, but you can still hold on to two items. And this can be helpful whether you are a leading player or if you're at the back of the race. 
Additionally, the starting items are great as well. You gain access to some really cool things like a speed boost apple and a shield. So this can help you get out of the pack very quickly at the start of those races, because let's be real, I think anyone else that's raced before, you know how it is at the starting line. Having to just fight out of that pack of races is brutal sometimes. So let's talk about these items because the race items play a really big role in your success for races. So if you are unsure and you ever forget about what these items do, you can talk to this lady here. She's also going to tell you what they do. But I think the cute thing is that she also displays what items are available in the races on the rack. So if you ever get like confused, they're, they're kind of there. Although there is one item here that I haven't seen in races before and I don't know why they're here. They're bombs. Um, Foxy, what are those bombs for? <laughs> Anyways, let's go through these items very quickly. I'm going to talk through the basic items first. The red apple item gives you a nice speed boost during the race. You can trigger this whenever you want as well. So if you ever need to, you can hold on to the apple and use it when you're in a bit of a pinch or if you want to try and get around a corner. But very, very helpful, especially if you're trying to play catch up in those races. And not just the apple, you can also, if you get lucky, get a bucket of apples, which is three instances of the apple boost. Another great item to use if you're sort of just stuck in the middle or the back of the pack and you really want to play catch up. Then there's the jar of honey item. Now this is a hazard item that you use to slow players that are behind you. And if you place it very well, you can actually use this to block shortcuts from other players. One of my most hated and loved items is the blue trap. This is just like the honey and, and is a hazard item that you throw on the ground. And essentially what you wanna do with this is to try to throw it in places where you think people are going to run so that if anyone is chasing you, they're gonna run into the trap, it's gonna slow them down and it's gonna provide more distance between you and the player behind you. Really awesome trap to use, especially if you know some really sneaky places to put it. Moving on to the advanced items. Guys, just a heads up, these next items I'm gonna talk about, you can only get these during races if you have two trait or personality bonuses. If you only have one trait personality bonus, you only have access to the items that I just spoke about. So to kick things off, let's talk about the boxing glove. This is a pretty interesting hazard item that you can use in a pretty aggressive fashion. So what you can do is that it's going to throw a trap in front of you. Best place to use these are in choke points where it's very difficult or very narrow. So people can't get away and will be hit by the boxing glove. One of my favorites, and I think a lot of other people love this one, the Firework Rocket. This is a handy item that is amazing for slowing down races in front of you. It doesn't matter where you are, as long as you trigger the item, it will chase down the player that is directly in front of you on the leaderboard. So if you are in second place and you have somebody in the race that is way ahead, and you cannot see them. If you use the firework, it will track them all the way down in first place. So definitely use this whenever you get this item because it will help close that gap between you and the player in front of you. And then we have the purple firework. This firework is so deadly, it's not funny. Uh, it's called the big firework because it is pretty much a giant firework. And this firework is different from the other one because this firework will actually only hit the first person in the race. So if you are in last place and you use the purple firework, it will directly chase down the person in first place. One of the only defensive items in the game, we have the shield. The shield is probably one of the most important items to have if you are actually in first place because it prevents you from taking damage. You can't be slowed down. You can run into a whole bunch of traps, a whole bunch of hazards and nothing will slow you down. Super, super helpful. If possible, ideally you kind of want to hang on to this until you feel like you're about to run into something or you're about to run into a trap, but super, super helpful. It will allow you to sort of bump into things if, you know, it kind of happens. But yeah, shield, awesome. Definitely use this. 
Ah, oh, the horn. I hate this item, guys. I'm not going to lie. Um, the horn is an item. If you trigger this, you are going to attack players that are in a small area around you. So if you're in the middle of the pack and you get the horn, you will attack everybody and slow them down. And again, another great item to help you just get out of the pack. And finally, the item to behold. If you ever get a golden horseshoe, basically what this item does is that it's going to make you so fast your horse will have the zoomies and you'll also have the effects of a shield so you can run into hazards you're going to be fast the whole point of this item is to basically catch up with everybody so golden horseshoe amazing item if you can get your hands on it but super super rare don't count on getting this item in your races it is actually so rare it's not funny all right, so you've picked out a horse, you know what the items do, you're tacked up, you're ready to go, the countdown is here, what do we do next? Okay, before we jump into the race demonstration, let's hop into a practice lobby, just so I can give you guys a quick rundown on controls and what things are gonna kind of be like when you're in these races, because it is nothing, absolutely nothing, like cross country and show jumping. All right, guys, we are in one of the races. This is a solo lobby as well, so there's no one else here. It's just me. So the controls for races, this is my demonstration horse as well on a different account. Luckily, I did have three trait bonuses, so we do have access to both of the slots. I'm gonna hide my character here so you guys can see what's kind of happening here. But as you can see, horse, two slots are open. Starting items, good to go. Controls here are more or less going to be the same as you would normally have for show jumping and cross country. Now the difference is when you go into a sprint, there is no speed arrow. You know the arrow that you use to go for those little speed boosts? Those don't exist here. The only way for you to get stamina back is either to slow down to a canter or hope that you get a stamina regeneration item or pick up these little green bottles on the ground. This is another item you're going to be seeing a lot in your races. So if you pick these up, we're gonna go back, I'm gonna use some stamina and you guys are gonna see what I mean by the stamina regeneration. We're going to gallop into this, look at my stamina and it goes up. Super helpful if you're in the middle of the race and you need a bit of a boost in stamina on the spot. Um, but sometimes these are on hazards. So be extremely careful when you are racing. Now, another way to regenerate stamina, okay? This one can be a little finicky, so please bear with me. With racing, they introduced sliding, and this is a new move that was added just for racing. So there is gonna be a button on mobile, a slide button. If you're on PC, it is, I think, gonna be bound to your control key. So if you turn and you press the slide button, can you see your stamina going up? So that is going to be useful if you're ever caught in a pinch and just like here, you're slowing down, you're running out of stamina. You can actually, if you want to, try and go for a cheeky little slide to try and get your stamina back. So we are very low, gonna go for a turn and you can get your stamina back. Now, the turning can is a bit more of an advanced technique. I'm not going to really go into too much detail for sliding here but definitely look into this for when you're like trying to make some of those tight turns. It is a really awesome move to have in these races. Now, again, I don't know if I mentioned this yet. There are no jumping things. So you know how like there were um, on, on show jumping and cross country, there are like these jump obstacles and it has that circle. So unfortunately, they don't have these here. So if you relied on getting stamina back from those in show jumping and cross country, you will need to unlearn that, <laughs> okay? That is not going to be helpful for you at all in these races because uh, yeah, they don't exist here and you have to manage your stamina in other ways. During these races as well, as you can see, there are going to be plenty of hazards. So you've got crazy things like windmills, you can run into water. Now, I think my first piece of advice is do not run off track. If you run off track or you go somewhere that is too far from the track, it will teleport you back. I have lost races where I've actually gone too far around the corner trying to do a shortcut and it just teleports me all the way back. So be careful of that. 
Um, sometimes in the races, you're gonna run into things like this. If you run into obstacles, you will hit them, it will slow you down, and it will also stop your stamina from ge regenerating. So be careful. You've also got things like this. Um, every track will have its own hazards, so be careful. Even these geysers, like, I'm just gonna stand on this. <laughs> I'm so sorry, horse, okay? But if you, if you hit the geyser, it will hurt you. So be careful of those hazards, guys. All right, so with the basic controls out of the way, let's jump into a demonstration race together, shall we? And I'm gonna walk you guys through what my thought process is during this race. I will introduce you to this lovely little horse that will be our demonstration horse. This is Paprika, a level 12 Kaiga Mustang. Now I have tacked this horse up as much as I could with, um, with what I had because I don't really play on this account anymore. And we do manage to get a pretty nice bonus. So we do have 71 speed, 47 agility, 38 jump, 22 acceleration and 21 stamina. And look, I can totally work with this. I don't expect us to really win this race. But I do have a goal in mind for these races. So we're gonna try and place as high as we can. And I'm gonna try and ride Paprika the best I can as well, making use of items and also dodging the hazards and explaining to you guys what I'm kind of thinking about when I'm riding behind people and what I think about when I'm in front of people. Because not only do you need to chase people down, you kind of have to think about like, okay, what do I do to stay in front of these other races? Anyways, let's hop into this race and let's get this party started. All right, guys, we are here ready to race. Before we get started though, just letting you know, do you see the participants list? So this list has a particular order. The racer at the top is the highest ranked player. And as you go down, the player's ranks are actually going down. So technically, if you're not at the top, you do not have the highest odds to win the race. And that might be very good for you because it means you don't have to beat as many people. So let's try to have as good of a start as we can get. Now, unfortunately, because my horse is not very fast, we're just gonna have to do our very best. But we do have access to items, but I did miss out on items, which is a little bit sad so oh gosh and I run into a trap already and I see fireworks okay they're not for us it's fine so focus we're gonna take items and have a horseshoe all right so we're gonna use this to try to catch up and we also have a shield so we can use this later on to try and protect ourselves if we do run into something but we're doing pretty good just got to watch the races in front of us and also watch my stamina. Also got to be careful of the hazards. And look at this, we are second place already, thanks to the horseshoe. Um, I am going to continue to take items here because items are the only way that we can keep up. And this will be very nice too because this regeneration item, I don't know why they didn't have it in the description, but this is another item that will be extremely handy. This is a shortcut that people like to use. So make sure you follow the races in front of you because they can be really helpful when you're trying to figure out like where these shortcuts are. Always take items, always follow the speed boosts and it's always beneficial to follow the person in front of you because sometimes it tells you whether or not the coast is clear. But every time you use items, definitely use it. I will be using this rocket now. Perfect, hits the player in front, having to jump over the water. Try not to swim in water because that is also like not good for you because <laughs> you will slow down. Try to cut those corners, stay with the speed boost. We're doing so well though, third place. Try not to step on the hazards, try and take items if we can and just stay. Oh gosh, almost ran into that. Oh. Oh my goodness, We're running out of stamina though, so a little bit of sliding. There we go. And we have a shield. I'm gonna hang on to this. Oh gosh, oh I ran out of stamina. Oh no. Okay, we'll regen a little bit, perfect. We have an apple. We will use the apple and we're gonna slide just to get that stamina back. Speed boost. Quite surprised the player did not try to go for the speed boost. All right, we have this, we're gonna use this. And they took the item, but they're out of stamina. This is why guys, be careful with your stamina because if you aren't, it is easy for somebody to overtake you. So make sure you're watching out for your stamina. All right, I have this, I've used this. Hopefully that slowed the other person down and we have an apple, which is brilliant. Lots of speed boosts, gonna use my apple. 
try and keep running along these boost paths. Try not to hit the hazards. I think at this rate, we are going to be sticking around in third place. Um, don't listen to the leaderboard. The leaderboard's like kind of <laughs> not working properly. So um, yeah, leaderboard's a little bit crazy. Don't listen to the leaderboard. <laughs> Need to go this way. I have an apple. I'm going to use this. It's enough. Yay. We came in third place. Wonderful. Avoid the hazards. Use the jump pads. And if you're running out of stamina, just go for a slide. But third place, considering that we were not the favorites to win this, like, heck yeah, let's go. Good job, Paprika. Okay, guys, that's going to conclude my introductory tutorial for horse racing. I hope it wasn't too much. I still feel like this video is quite overwhelming. But if you guys do remember all of this stuff, it is going to help you in these races because you know how to use your items. You will know how to react when players do certain things. And most importantly, manage your stamina. I know this is something a lot of players new to racing really struggle with. So make sure you look after your horse's stamina, whether it be through sliding or collecting all of the green collectibles on the ground. But that's going to be it for me and Emperor. As always, guys, if you do enjoy any of my Star Equestrian content, whether it be through the series or the guide, do leave a like on the video so I know that you are enjoying it. And also, if you have any questions, like I said at the beginning, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. I feel like there is still a lot of things that I kind of missed that I should have talked about, but like I am currently overwhelming myself with all this information, like thinking about it. So yeah, if I miss anything, it might be in the comments below, but if I didn't bring it up and it's not in the comments, you know, I think it's a good idea that you do because maybe someone else has the same question as you and we'll be able to answer everything all in one go. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much. And if you're new to the channel and you've watched this tutorial, like, hi, <laughs> my name is Dasha Bella. I'm a virtual equestrian VTuber and I play a lot of Star Equestrian, but I also play other horse games too. So if you are a bit of a horsey nerd like me as well, do consider subscribing to the channel so you can get future notifications for all of my future uploads. And to all of my racing pros out there, don't worry, there is a video coming out for you guys in the future. I am making it with a lot of love and like this one, super excited to bring that out. But uh, I hope you guys are ready to sit down and listen because I can kind of talk. <laughs> I kind of hate it, but I can kind of talk. Um, Yeah, your video is coming out soon, I promise. <laughs> All right, that's it for me, guys. See you next time. Bye.